What's up everybody D-Man back welcome to a brand new video and 2020 is in full force at this point I don't know what day this video is coming out but 2020 is in full force and that can only mean one thing it's time to do something controversial like rank my top 10 kaiju movies of the last decade here we go <laughs> If there are two things I will remember walking out of the 2010s, it's Fortnite and Mark Ass Brownlee. Let's, so uh, there, there was 10 kaiju films that came out in the 2010s. 10 kaiju films. I should have written down the dates. Let's talk about my top 10 kaiju films of the decade. I was actually a YouTuber for all but two of these movies. All but two of these movies I was doing videos for. That's wild. Just shows second half of the decade way more stacked with kaiju films than the first half. Number 10, starting it out with number 10. Coming in at the bottom of my top 10 kaiju films of the decade list, Pacific Rim Uprising. Look, I don't even want to talk about this movie, and here's why. Because I feel like I'm going to get run into the ground with universal copyright strikes and complaints and claims just for simply mentioning the word Pacific Rim Uprising. The thing is, this movie is bland and upsetting on so many levels because it had so much potential and there's so much good stuff in the movie. There's so much much to like about it that the fact that it falls apart is heartbreaking and also I have a really bad taste in my mouth from this movie due to Universal just claiming every single video I make on it just striking them out of existence so that they don't exist so I'm a little bit more negative on this movie than I should be and look if I'm being fair if I'm trying to be fair to Pacific Rim Uprising it's not a terrible movie it's my bottom of the list there was 10 kaiju movies that came out in the 2010s this is the 10th obviously it's my least favorite kaiju film of the past 10 years but it wasn't terrible the jaeger vs jaeger action is awesome and the few times they fight a kaiju in the movie it's very exciting i think john boyega does a good job in the movie and that main girl wasn't bad either so john boyega and her amara her name was amara Psh, that's right Look, here's the thing with Pacific Rim Uprising. It has so much wasted opportunities and so much missed potential and so many missteps such as killing Mako. Sorry, spoiler alert. They kill Mako. They do so many bad things. They ignore Raleigh and I get that you can't have him back, but at least offer an explanation as to where he is. They do so many missteps making Charlie Day the villain. I just think so much of the movie is messy. The soundtrack specifically holds the movie back more than anything else. The soundtrack in that movie isn't good. There's about three good songs on the soundtrack and the rest of it's bad. With a different sound soundtrack, some different editing, and some slight creative tweaks, the movie could have been awesome. The children in the movie, I'm not a fan of, but there's so much strong stuff with the adult characters in that movie that I really do struggle to dislike it. I mean, I almost want to dislike it due to the way Universal treats me when I talk about it. That's the thing that I dislike about it, because again, the movie itself, I don't think was terrible. I actually liked Pacific Rim Uprising. I didn't love Pacific Rim Uprising, but I liked it. It's also interesting to see the Pacific Rim Uprising now is lower on my list than Rampage, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Whereas when I ranked them initially back two years ago, Pacific Rim Uprising was above Rampage, actually. Next up is Rampage. <laughs> they just switched. That's all that happened from the original. They just switched. Pacific Rim Uprising and Rampage, they're both 2018 releases, both at the start of 2018. Rampage, is it a kaiju movie? I don't know. It's a monster movie for sure. And I've seen it ranked on kaiju lists from other Godzilla prominent figures in the community. So sure, we'll say it's a kaiju film. Obviously, I'm a little biased towards this film because my friend Jason Lyles played George in the movie so obviously I'm a little biased towards it but I did like this movie quite a bit it's quite the enjoyable popcorn flick that's the best way to describe it it's a popcorn flick it's a turn your brain off watch some fun action stuff happen kind of movie it's not got a deep plot it's certainly not trying to make you ponder existence but it is a lot of fun it's just giving you some good action to watch and you get good action to watch the fight scenes are cool the destruction is cool it's a cool movie next up number eight on the list God's Godzilla City on the Edge of Battle. So interesting the way these anime movies rank as well because I'm in a constant struggle with these ones where they're always fluctuating but at the moment Godzilla City on the Edge of Battle is my least favorite of the anime movies although I think the human stuff is fairly strong especially compared to the way everyone else views it. I think the human stuff in the movie is fairly strong and I love the ending when Godzilla goes full on Scarlet Godzilla fiery burning everything in sight blowing up Mechagodzilla City. It's so badass 
and so cool. I love that. Got my favorite incarnation of Godzilla, Scarlet Godzilla Earth. I think he's so cool. But at the same time, the movie just doesn't have as much to latch onto as the other anime films. So it is the lower one on my list when compared to those. Next up at number seven, we have Godzilla Monster Planet from 2017. Godzilla City on the Edge of Battle was also a 2017 or 2018 release. It was 2018. Godzilla City on the Edge of Battle was 2018. Godzilla Monster Planet was a 2017 release, if I'm not mistaken. It's pretty solid. I don't know. I know a lot of kaiju fans don't love it, but I think it's pretty solid. I think the human stuff is intriguing enough. I think that the whole space aspect is cool. I like the futuristic aspects of it. I love the backstory to it. I think the intro is great. Soundtrack's really cool. Metfis and Haruo are awesome characters, so I've got a lot to love there. And then, once Godzilla shows up, the whole last 30 minutes of that movie are awesome. Once Godzilla Phileas is out there, they're fighting him with the Billis Ludo in the military, and they're just going crazy on him. It's super cool. When they get him in that trap and explode him, super awesome finale when Godzilla Earth rises up out of the ground and just decimates the troops. I loved the ending of that movie so much that I put it above City on the Edge of Battle because I just think the last 30 minutes of that movie are awesome. And then Godzilla the Planet Eater, the one that I was super conflicted on a year ago when it came out because holy cow, it was hard to get a grasp on that movie. It's got my favorite character stuff of the anime trilogy. Mephis, again, really shines in this movie. He shines throughout the whole trilogy, but really in this movie, Mephis shines. He's awesome. Haruo has some great stuff. I love the whole fighting inside his mind. Meanwhile, Godzilla's doing the, I don't know if you could call it a physical fight, but Godzilla's fighting with Ghidorah. I think Ghidorah's scarier presented in that movie than he ever is in any other movie. So I think it's great. I love that. I'm not a huge fan of the Ghidorah design, and there are some missteps along the way in that movie, such as what they do with, you know, our female anime protagonists. Pretty much every single female anime character in that movie gets something to do that I don't like. But hey, they killed Yuko, and that is something that I can never stop thanking them for. Godzilla the Planet Eater from 2018 or 19, depending on when you got to see it, depending on what country you lived in. It's number six on the list. Next up, we have Pacific Rim from 2013. This is the number five on my list. This movie, when it came out, I slept on it. I was like, oh, it's Transformers, but monsters. Nope, get out of here. My dad even asked. I remember him being like, you want to go see Pacific Rim? And I was like, no, no, it's a Transformers ripoff and Transformers movies aren't even good. So no. You fast forward to six months after it comes out on DVD and I watched it from Redbox and I fell in love with it. I couldn't believe I skipped it in theaters. It's awesome. The movie's so kick-ass. The soundtrack is great. Great. The special effects are awesome. Jaegers are sick. And then fighting the kaiju is so cool. I love the kaiju in the movie as well. They're all unique. They're all totally different than the Godzilla kaiju we're used to. It's an awesome movie. Great cast. Lots of fun. Loads of great action. Great color palette. Great visuals. Too much rain. That's my big complaint. Too much rain. Maybe not enough character stuff. Pacific Rim from 2013 was a movie I was obsessed with in 2014. And all these years later, I still love it. So it definitely deserves a higher spot on my list list and it lands a higher spot on the list at number five I guess you could call that a higher spot it's a mid-tier but I, I think it's a great movie because now we are into what I consider the greats of the decade number four Godzilla 2014 this movie's a slow burn but I think the payoff is fantastic I really love this movie I know a lot of people don't I would have enjoyed some different things happening with some of our characters I think Ford Brody could be a little more emotional and I think that Joe Brody could have stuck around a little longer you know the common complaints for the film, but unlike most people, you don't hear me complaining about Godzilla's screen time because I think this movie handles Godzilla right. By not showing Godzilla constantly, you really tease Godzilla, build up anticipation, and that way when he's on screen, you really feel the presence of Godzilla. My biggest complaint about the movie is that it should have been a more Godzilla-focused movie, where Godzilla should have been the thing driving the plot rather than the Mutos, because if you're not going to have Godzilla on screen, his presence should be felt throughout the film, and in this movie, it really isn't. It's more of the Muto's presence is felt until Godzilla shows up and then he steals the show. And that's not how I think a Godzilla movie should be, which is why I said it's nearly perfect. I like the way it handles Godzilla's screen time, but I don't like the way it handles Godzilla overall. That's why it's number four on the list instead of being something higher. A movie that is higher on the list, and this is where we get a little controversial, Godzilla King of the Monsters. I know a lot of people would think this would be my number one from the decade. Not only are we still in a little bit of a honeymoon phase with that movie, but also I've got a lot of bias towards it. It, of course, was a huge center point on the channel. I know some actors from the movie. I've had a lot of great experiences because of Godzilla King of the Monsters. But look, Godzilla King of the Monsters doesn't give me as much enjoyment as the next two on the list, and so that's why it falls here. This movie, however, does it right. They show Godzilla, I think, a good amount. I think they show Godzilla pretty much a perfect amount in the movie. He's there a lot, but he really doesn't have all 
all that much screen time when you break it down, but his presence is felt the entire film. I love the character stuff with Mark Russell and Sarah Zoe in this movie. I think the villains are interesting in this film. I think the other monsters are great. I love Ghidorah. Rodan is a bit of a missed opportunity, but he does have one of the most fantastic destruction scenes in the franchise. And then Mothra is really a show stealer in this film. Godzilla King of the Monsters may be number three, but that doesn't mean I'm not absolutely in love with this film. Number two on the list. I'm sorry, you guys knew it was going to happen, right? You knew once Godzilla was number three, you knew what was going to happen. Kong Skull Island is my next on the list. Yeah, Kong Skull Island is my favorite MonsterVerse movie. I'm sorry to break it to you. I have way more fun watching this movie than I do with the others. It's got a totally different feel than the others. I don't know what is exactly different about it, but Kong Skull Island is just an awesome movie in my opinion. I love the visuals. I love the cinematography. I love that you can actually see the fights. They're in daylight. Kong's got much more of a lighthearted and fun and just enjoyable feel to it. The movie's funny. It still is funny even after multiple, multiple rewatches. I still laugh at it. The visuals are great. Like I said, the soundtrack is awesome. Godzilla King of the Monsters also has an epic soundtrack. I should just mention that. But Kong School Island, I don't know. It just really steals the show for the MonsterVerse for me. If you were to sit me down and say I could only pick one MonsterVerse film, I'm probably picking Kong School Island. And number one, you all knew this was going to be number one, right? You kind of did at least. I know some people would probably assume King of the Monsters because of bias, but if you had really taken the time to think about it, you knew what the number one of the decade was for me. It was Shin Godzilla, right? It's Shin Godzilla, the movie that started it all, kind of, kind of, started all the popularity for the channel. Got a huge connection to the movie for that reason, but even setting that aside, I think it's a masterpiece. Not only do I think it's shot beautifully, edited beautifully, the soundtrack is incredible. I think the acting is way better than people give it credit for because it's quite subtle and people don't really notice that. They don't pick up on the nuances of the performances, but they're great. The performances themselves are great. All the characters are interesting for me. I know a lot of people don't agree with that, but I'm, hey, this is my video. If you don't agree with that, I don't care, make your own video. Shin Godzilla also has my favorite Godzilla stuff of the franchise with that little middle section from when Godzilla shows back up in his final form, his fourth form, all the way to the atomic breath ending. My favorite Godzilla section ever. He's got the best destruction stuff in this. He's so powerful and scary in this section. And that atomic breath sequence is number one of the decade alone. <laughs> you could give me that as a little short film and it probably tops my list. That is everything that Godzilla is for me. He's a bad guy who is ruthless and he is just out to prove a point that mankind should not exist. I love it. That's exactly what I love Godzilla for. Listen, I love the hero Godzilla in the MonsterVerse. I think the MonsterVerse Godzilla is great. I like his personality more than I like Shin Godzilla's lack of personality, but Godzilla's always been a bad guy for me. And although I can get behind the good guy Godzilla movies and although I can get behind a good guy Godzilla, at the end of the day, for me, Godzilla is a bad guy. And so seeing Godzilla as a bad guy this decade just wipe stuff out. That's exactly what I wanted. Although the movie has some odd choices such as shooting lasers out of your back and tail. Mm, not, not sure. I can't get over it all these all these years later. I still can't. And uh, shape-shifting, really? Did we need the shape-shifting? I don't know. The movie's great. I loved the movie. Look, I, I'm not saying it's a perfect movie. There are flaws with it that I can find. But I am saying it's my favorite kaiju film of the past 10 years. And sure, I've seen some other lists include films like Colossal, but I never got to see Colossal. I'm also not convinced that's really a kaiju film as it's more of a psychological study and the kaiju aren't really the point of the movie. If you've seen the movie or if you're like me and you know what the movie's truly about it's not a kaiju movie whatever i'm just saying i didn't see it so it's not on my list and i don't really consider it a kaiju film unless maybe i saw it and then i changed my mind but at the moment i don't and then i've seen people put like the meg and jurassic park on a list like this i hate to break it to you guys but those are not kaiju at all they're not so get those out of here and that'll do it for this one boys and girls what is your ranking of the kaiju film this decade what do you think why is kong school island your favorite <laughs> people aren't gonna find that funny because they're too serious about stuff. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you guys next time for the next one. D-Man out.